Hey everyone, one of the more interesting stories to appear this week has been the news that the North Korean leader has died at the age of 36, a remarkably young age really, although very much in line with North Korean life expectancy. It's actually a rather strange story as it's been commonly reported in many places apart from the big TV networks which are waiting for the official press release to drop before they decide to run their tape and finally get on with the Macambra discussion of who's going to be taking on that new role as leader. Look forward to a few days of television anchors speaking to experts, former diplomats, as well as a clueless singer promoting an album that walked into the wrong studio. Their opinion, of course, based on complete guesswork, would probably be just as accurate as the experts. The world of political fortune telling has a track record littered with more failures than Henry VIII's marriage counsellor. Running North Korea, though it's a very dangerous job, but the US poised to launch an attack at any point. The job is seen by many as a poison chalice. You could quite literally be passed a poison chalice at dinner by a rival family member. Assuming Kim has died, though, who's going to be the next dear leader? Who are the possible candidates? Well, number one, Kim Yo Kong, the Supreme Leader's sister, is a frontrunner. She'll probably get the job, if I'm honest, and she'll probably spend the first week or so making a list of enemies she wants to, quote, disappear. Hundreds of officials will be murdered, thousands of civilians will die in labour camps, and yet, despite this, she'll be held up as a progressive bastion of feminism by some. Jeremy Corbyn will blame the West, a Guardian article will claim that Pretty Patel is a far worse woman, the BBC will probably attribute Kim Jong Un's death to NHS underfunding in Wales. Number two, a military takeover. This one would be a bit more fun, I guess, from an audience perspective, a bit like watching a badly made remake of Scarface. I'm imagining some kind of scramble for power in the aftermath with bullets flying everywhere and presumably bouncing off the hundreds of medals that those generals always wear that make them look a bit like an armoured soldier from the Shogunate era. Given the country's repeated failure to develop a ballistic missile system, it's probably not hard to imagine one of the top brass saying that, you know, if you want something done properly, do it yourself. Number three, though, if you fancy a flutter, Dennis Rodman is a good long odds bet you might want to put a fiver down on if you're the sort of person who likes to bet on horses at 100 to 1. Stranger things have happened, of course. Remember when Leicester City won the Premier League a few years back? Or when Madonna was in charge of Argentina? I, th I think that's what that film was about. Nonetheless, for whatever reason I'll never quite understand and I can't be bothered to research, Dennis Rodman is phenomenally popular in that country, well ahead of other celebrities like Tom Hanks or Lionel Messi. What's strangest of all, though, is if you really want a celebrity that can defend your country, the only answer would surely be to recruit Chuck Norris. Rumour has it that Chuck Norris once downed an enemy fighter plane by pointing his finger at it and saying, bang. Number four, perhaps I'll just claim it he's still alive or he's somehow ruling the country as some kind of ghost or spirit from the underworld, like the bad guy in a poorly CGI'd movie. They have a weird cult for the ruling dynasty out there and I really wouldn't put it past them to do a Norman Bates and run the place with a Ouija board. I'm not sure if the North Koreans have an equivalent figure to Derek Akora, but I can imagine him going on stage saying that the spirit's very strong tonight and then asking, is there a Jong in the audience? Jong? John? Jong? Never mind. See you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.